All right, y'all. Donald J. Trump has made a speech. He has talked to a public audience. And I, I feel like before we get into the serious shit, we should talk about what's going on here. Well, to be honest with you, this is my first time covering a Trump speech. And to be completely honest with you, this is my first time watching a Trump speech in its entirety. I've never had the will to sit through an entire Trump speech. So this is a big event for me. And it's also a big event for the Astros, which uh, who, who won tonight. Good for them. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, one second. Let me get serious. Let me get serious. Good for them, you know. But this is a big event for me. And uh, I figure it's a big event, so I should dress like it. I should dress like it's a big event. Uh, I got his, I got his kind of eyes covered up a little bit, but you can, you can tell what's going on, man. I got a dorsal fin back here. You can't see it, but it's there. Uh, so yeah, big event, dress like it. Uh, that's what I was always taught. And, uh, this is a big event for me and for the country. So uh, let's see what Mr. Donnie J. Trump has to say. Uh, go and we're going to listen. The president has now come out. This is undoctored audio, by the way. I did nothing to this audio. It's just this, like, blasted by default. Okay, do you know how I know this crowd is all white people? There's no rhythm in the chant. Simple as that. There's not a single person of color, of any color, in this crowd. And I can tell that because there is zero fucking rhythm in this chant. Every single time I've seen a chant fall apart, it has been the fault of a white person. And this goes for myself included. It has been the fault of a white person for a chant falling apart. And when you have a crowd full of white people, you can't even get them started. Houston mentioned. Okay. What the fuck is bro over here doing? <laughs> oh my god. Fucking, I could shine a spotlight off of that thing. Holy shit. <laughs> the bro, where does bro think he is? This is like, this is a main character moment for him. Bro, even Trump is laughing at him. Holy shit, dude. You can see him. You can see him. He is holding back laughter right now because this dude is embarrassing himself so hard. Holy shit. Okay. It just keeps going. This sounds so bit crushed. I don't know if that's the right technical term, but it sounds it sounds like that. Oh my god. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. It's a great honor to have you here. And today we witnessed the most evil and heinous abuse of power in the history of our country. Very sad thing to watch. A corrupt sitting president had his top 
political opponent arrested on fake and fabricated charges of which he and numerous other presidents would be guilty. Right in the I don't think he's entirely wrong here. Every single president, as soon as they touch the Oval Office, is guilty of war crimes. You know, it's sort of like a right message, wrong person kind of thing. Or, I said this on a pillow stream, um, right message, weird person, I guess, would be a better term here. In the middle of a presidential election, in which he is losing very badly. Motherfucker, the election isn't even going on right now. This is like the pre-election. Does he not, does he not know that like votes aren't being cast? This is called election interference and yet another attempt to rig and steal a what election? Presidential election. More importantly, it's a the pr the presidential election that hasn't started yet. Okay, I, I I'm gonna be real. I can do semantics all fucking day with Trump, but I'm just gonna from now on. I'm just not gonna. Political persecution like something straight out of a fascist or a communist nation. Two opposite things, by the way. Anyways, I I'm sorry, I know I'd stop with semantics, but... This day will go down in infamy and Joe Biden will forever be remembered as not only the most corrupt president in the history of our country, but perhaps, even more importantly, the president who, together with a band of his closest thugs, misfits, and Marxists, tried to destroy... American democracy. I, I really like the, the tactical thug here. Because he could have just, like, said, like, demons, you know? He could have easily have just said, like, demons, and the base would have felt the exact same. But uh, he, he deliberately chose the word thug here to, obviously, allude to black people. Uh, which the Biden administration is uncharacteristically rich in. I believe uh, it's uncharacteristically rich in voices of color, which uh, Trump, Trump and likey. They will fail and we will win bigger and better than ever before. <laughs> Charging a former president of the United States under the Espionage Act of 1917 wasn't meant for this. Yes it, yes, it was. Act for a crime so heinous that only the death penalty would do and threatening me with 400 years in prison for possessing my own presidential papers, which... Well, then don't have confidential papers um, in your personal, uh, private place. It's really as simple and easy as that. The thing is, with him, every single president does this on accident you know, or on purpose, but they don't know that it's a thing. I'm sure now on they will. But whenever the FBI or whoever takes care of this shit is like, Ayo, Mr. President, you gotta come return these files. They're always like, okay. And then they return the files. The problem with Trump is not that he did it because doing it self, I'm sure is technically, it's one of those like kind of technically a crime. You shouldn't do it, but you're probably gonna over the course of your presidency. The The problem with Trump is that he did it and then he denied doing it. And then when he was caught doing it, he was like, mm, no, I think I'll keep these papers. Just about every other president has done is one of the most outrageous and vicious legal theories ever put forward in an American court of law. The Espionage Act has been used to go after traitors and spies. It has nothing to like like you yeah to do with a former president legally keeping his own documents as president the law that oh my god they fixed the audio i'm so up right now holy shit i'm sorry guys that it took them 10 minutes into this video or nine minutes into this video to fix the audio but they finally did it that applies to this case is not the espionage act but very simply the presidential records act which is not even mentioned in this ridiculous 44-page indictment. The DOJ is smarter than me. You know, to me, this this makes sense, you know? Uh, it's, a, it's a record that refers to something that the president um, was planning or was doing. So to me, um, just as somebody who doesn't know the specifics of this, this makes sense. However, I trust smart people. I trust people who know more th about things than me. And... 
if the DOJ, the fucking Department of Justice, says it is a thing, I am more prone to believe them than I am my uninformed uh, opinion. You know, maybe these things are poorly named and maybe they should be renamed. I don't know. Under the Presidential Records Act, which is civil, not criminal, I had every... And I'm, didn't, I'm pretty sure he did both. He might have done both. Every right to have these documents. The crucial legal precedent is laid out in the most important case ever on the subject known as the Clinton Sox case. You know what that means? After leaving the White House, Bill Clinton kept 79 audio tapes in his sock drawer. They included discussions of U.S. military involvement in Haiti, on, discussions of U.S. foreign policy, both defense oh, and offense, it. against Cuba, recordings of President Clinton's conversations with all of the many foreign leaders at the time. Think of that. Sensitive facts about trade negotiations taken from presidential briefings, discussions with the Secretary of State about conflict in Bosnia and much, much more. Very big stuff. Not only was Bill Clinton never even considered for criminal prosecution based on the tapes he took, but when he was sued for them, he won the case. Judge Amy Berman Jackson's decision states under the statutory scheme established by the Presidential Records Act, the decision to segregate personal materials from presidential records is made by the president during the president's term and in the president's sole discretion. The problem is you didn't do that. Um, you aren't president <laughs> uh, and you were found with the documents that were not declassified. So you're surprised to hear that, aren't you? Any normal administration, even an opposing one, would consider that to be the end, but not the corrupt Biden administration. The Sox decision, as it's known, also states, quote, the National Archives and Records Administration, or NARA, does not have the authority to designate material as presidential records. I don't have the authority. NARA does not have the tapes in question, and NARA lacks any right, duty, or means to seize control of them. This is law. The president enjoys unconstrained authority to make decisions regarding the disposal of documents. That's unconstrained to make that decision. Neither the archivist nor Congress has the authority to veto the president's decision. The Presidential Records Act does not confer any mandatory or even discretionary authority on the archivist to classify records. The problem is, he's operating under the assumption that he's president, which he's not. He can't declassify these records. And even if he could, I, there's, I'm pretty sure there's a long legal process for that that uh, he would not have gone through. Under the statute, this responsibility is left solely to the President of the United States. Think of that. That's the decision. Think of that. Who is not you. Now, just think of that. In other words, whatever documents the President decides to take with him, he has the right to do so. It's an absolute right. This is the law. The problem is, again... The DOJ, or, you know, not the DOJ, but the CIA or the FBI or whoever the fuck can just call you and be like, hey, give us these documents. They are very classified, you know, they're of highest importance. Uh, we need to, we need to have them, basically. And uh, Trump said no, even when he was not president. He said, mm, no, I don't think I'll give them to you. And these these, of course, were not declassified. He said he declassified them in his mind, which is the worst argument I think I've ever heard. You know, I, uh, I, it's like that one meme where it's, uh, destroys you with my mind type shit. 
It's the exact same. Declassifies with mind. <laughs> Fucking same meme. But uh, he didn't declassify these documents. Plain and simple. He had the opportunity to. He had all the chances in the world to. He didn't. And then after his presidency, he spread them all around. He showed them to fucking Kid Rock. He showed the records to Kid Rock, dude. Allegedly. Allegedly, he showed the records to Kid Rock. Which, come on. You think he has, like, access to, to, like, anything? Law. And that is something that people have now seen, and it couldn't be more clear. They ought to drop this case immediately because they're destroying the country. And this is why no other president, even those who kept far more documents than I, has ever been even investigated, let alone charged with a crime. They gave the documents back. Because the sham indictment put forward by the Biden administration included staged photographs of boxes at Mar-a-Lago, many people have asked me why I had these boxes. Why did you want them? The answer, in addition to having every right under the Presidential Records Act, is that these boxes were containing all types of personal belongings, many, many things, shirts and shoes and everything. Then take them out. Like, it's simple as that. Like, <laughs> take them out. <laughs> Duh. As can be seen in the picture where someone, not me, I wonder who it might have been, dumped one of the very neatly arranged boxes all over the floor. They were full of newspapers, press clippings, thousands of pictures, thousands and thousands of White House <laughs> pictures. The White House photographers, some are with us today. They took so many pictures, and we saved all of them, and they were in those boxes. Clothing, memorabilia, and much, much more. I hadn't had a chance to go through all the boxes. It's a long, tedious job. It takes a long time, which I was prepared to do, but I have a very busy life. I've had a very busy life. They make it more busy because you're always fighting. And under the Sox decision, can I, can I just call BS? I think outside of campaigning, Trump has nothing at all to do. I, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be proven wrong. Uh, but, uh, I've, I've yet to see any evidence of this. I think outside of campaigning, Trump lives an incredibly sedentary and just an uneventful life. There seemed to be no rush. I wasn't in a rush because that decision was a law. The other picture that was so vile, you remember that one, it was angry and corrupt, was the photo staged by the FBI. And those that raided Mar-a-Lago, they were putting documents all over the floor. Remember that famous picture? All okay. If Trump comes out as anti-FBI, that's going to be fucking insane. Is he gonna? Is he? Is he gonna get disappeared? Is he gonna die? <laughs> Are they gonna shoot him in the head? All over, say confidential, said presidential, said all sorts of things, and it was supposed to be there. Like it was that way when they raided. It wasn't that way. They put them there, took the picture, and released it illegally to the press. They took my medical records, my passport, my birth certificate, and apologized. They even brought a safe cracker. This is a professional safe cracker they brought into Mar-a-Lago. And they broke into my safe. And you know what they found? Nothing. There was nothing there. <laughs> nothing there. I'm sure what he's saying is one of those things where it's like, it technically isn't true. You know, in the boxes, I don't doubt that there weren't like shirts and shoes and pants and underwear and stuff like that and like ties and whatever. I'm sure what he's saying isn't technically untrue but uh what about the other stuff that was in the boxes what about the other stuff that was in mar-a-lago that you are like 100 percent provably guilty of having under false pretenses what about what about those like zero according to the presidential records act which was a big deal I was supposed to negotiate with NARA, which is exactly what I was doing until Mar-a-Lago was raided by gun-toting FBI agents. 
I have security tapes of it. I gave them security tapes of everything. In a flagrant violation of the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, which protects the right against unreasonable search and seizure. But it doesn't protect from the right of reasonable search and seizure. They had a warrant. You, you know, if the DOJ does something, they're not going to do it illegally. They are going to, you know, probably bend the rules. If the DOJ does something domestically speaking, I don't know about overseas, but if they do something domestically, it's, it's not going to be against the rules. They built these laws specifically so they could do shit like this. Whether you think it's right or wrong, it is legal. <laughs> And Sebastian, you covered very well, I must say. Very well. I'm not the one who thinks I'm above the law. I'm the one that followed the law. I'm the only one. It's Joe Biden and his corrupt Department of Injustice who think they are above the law. Never before have the two standards of justice in our country been more starkly revealed. Joe Biden had troves of classified documents from his time as vice president and even as a senator, which was completely and totally illegal. In fact, other senators heard about it. Dick Durbin heard about it. You have to see his resp uh, source. response. There's no way that's totally illegal. Took him as a senator out of a skiff. They were shocked when they found out. They actually thought it was impossible to do. Biden sent... 1,850 boxes to the University of Delaware, making the search very, very difficult for anybody. And he refuses to give them up, and he refuses to let people even look at them. And then they say how he's behaving so nicely. Many of Biden's classified documents were in Criminal. Chinatown, D.C., Chinatown, which is shocking considering his family received so much money from China. I wonder how many times the... Friends of ours from China reviewed those documents. Chinatown, D.C. Others were unsecured at his so-called... Okay, this might be a stretch, but is he trying to, like, call for, uh, a, like, a raid of Chinatown? That'd be... F I don't want to say that'd be funny, but it would be, uh, it'd be very Trump. Penn Biden Center in Washington, which paid Biden... Approximately one million dollars a year, the money supposedly coming from China and still other classified documents were strewn all over his garage floor, where his now famous Corvette is stored. He's so proud of that car. There was no security and the door was left open most of the time. It was open. All of those classified documents, all of the... I want to see something. Okay. So we've established that Biden's favorite car is a Corvette made by Chevy, which is an American company. Let me look up what Trump, what Trump's like main car is. Let me see. Trump favorite car. Let's see here. All right, so we got a German car. Uh, I, th uh, I think Rolls Royce is German. Uh, we have an Italian car. We have an American car. American. Hold on. Yeah, we got German. Let me let me verify this. Rolls Royce origin. Um, London. Hey. So we got German, English, uh, English, and then a fucking random picture of an Italian car, uh, and an American car, which, uh, huh, I don't know, it seems like Biden's the real American to me here, I don't know, that, I don't know man. Those documents strewn all over the floor, piled up like junk. Unlike me, who had absolute declassification authority as president, Joe Biden... President of what? Because it wasn't America. And his vice president had no authority to declassify and no right to possess the documents. He had no right. 
Instead of falling under the Presidential Records Act, Biden's actions fell under a much stricter Federal Records Act, which has very, very tough criminal penalties. Yet nothing happens to Crooked Joe. Nothing happens. Is it perchance the same act that encompasses the things that you did? And have you heard anything about the big search for his documents? No, only me. Yeah, we haven't heard anything because, uh, I don't know, it probably wasn't a thing at all. Uh, Trump is a very prolific liar. Uh, there used to be, like, just, like, a day after a Trump speech, you could go on to most any media sort of conglomerate and just be like fact uh statement da 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 um fact and then it's the absolute opposite of like just any trump speech most and famously of all hillary clinton set up an illegal private server in her basement you never heard this story <laughs> with a deliberate intent uh, I'm pretty sure that was a joke, but... ...tension of violating public information laws so she could hide her pay-for-play scandals at the Clinton Foundations or whatever. Hillary stored vast quantities of classified and sensitive information on her illicit server. Some of it happened to leak. It leaked into Anthony Weiner's computer. Remember Anthony Weiner? <laughs> into his computer. You don't want to be on his computer. And all of it was illegal because, thankfully, she was never president. She didn't have the powers to declassify. Thank you. Is he still on, like, the lock her up thing? Like, it, it's been seven years? It's been seven years, little bro. Thank you. She didn't have the powers to declassify. It's a big difference. And neither did Joe. You know, Joe didn't have your mind. Have a drink. It's a little bit cooler than it was. It's pretty hot out here. Thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Great birthday. Nice birthday, isn't it? Okay. Nice birthday. Wonderful birthday. Trump has a great ability to say nothing and then hype up a crowd. Whenever he feels that the crowd isn't really like into it, he'll just pivot like a hard pivot. I'm, I'm sorry. Hold on. Like, I can't. I, a hard pivot. He will 180 and then he, he'll use that 180 to get the crowd invested and he'll go boom right on. Fucking. And then he'll go boom right back into it and he'll use that crowd engagement from before to make people more prone to uh believing him whenever he says just like bullshit they were saying happy birthday i was with i was with eric and laura the kids happy birthday grandpa happy and i said oh great i just got charged with they want 400 years approximately <laughs> if you add them all up a fake a fake 400 years old. Thank you, darling. That's so nice. It's a wonderful birthday. And we're going to make it into the greatest birthday of all. We'll make it into the greatest birthday of all. When caught, Hillary then deleted an acid wash. Nobody does that because of the expense, but it's pretty conclusive. 33,000 emails in defiance of a congressional subpoena already launched. The subpoena was there, and she decided to uh, delete acid wash and then smash and destroy her cell phones with a hammer. And then they say, I participate. That seems really ineffective to me. Like, <laughs> just smashing the phone itself and, then, you know, leaving the SIM card just there. That seems really ineffective to me, and I'm pretty sure that's not what happened at all. ...in an obstruction? No, think of it. That's called obstruction. There's never been obstruction as grave as that. She did this in the face of everything, and yet nobody did anything about it. The FBI and the DOJ protected her, did not issue subpoenas, did not use a grand jury, did not execute search warrants, and then the... Corrupt head of the FBI, James Comey, declared no reasonable prosecutor would bring a case. Can you believe it? 
And that was just one of many items. Hillary Clinton broke the law, and she didn't get indicted. Joe Biden broke the law, and in many other ways, we're finding out, and so far has not gotten indicted. I did everything right, and they indicted me. But, you know, we're serving as a great example in the case of Bill Clinton. Something, something, if everyone's crazy but you, you're the crazy one, something, something. This national security advisor, remember that? Sandy Berger. He was caught stealing classified documents from the National Archives, very big ones, very important ones, by stuffing them in his pants. That's pretty. <laughs> and putting them also in his socks. And he destroyed them and cut the tape with scissors, cut them all up. What Berger did was highly illegal, but he was given nothing, no jail time, nothing, nothing happened. There are countless other examples. Bill Clinton, who I happen to like, hard to believe, right? Before I did this, I was actually quite friendly with him. Nice guy. They should have used him a little bit more as an advisor on the 2016 election. He said, you know, you better get to Wisconsin, you're going to lose. No, we're not. You better get to Michigan. You're going to lose. No, we're not. They did. Bill Clinton lost the nuclear codes, and absolutely nothing was done about it. He lost the nuclear codes. Is this a real thing? Because if so, that's really funny. The George W. Bush White House lost 22 million emails. A record. Okay, I can, I can, I can unironically believe that. NARA cannot assure... But I don't think that they did that uh, with malintent. I think that just kind of happened. It is the George W. Bush White House, after all. Complete transfer of any of the Bush records. A document-shredding truck was spotted on the way to Dick Cheney's house. Can you imagine? Hillary Clinton took hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of furniture, china, flatware, rugs, and more from the White House. And she wasn't prosecuted. How about that one? She took the furniture and the china. That's kind of dope. How about if Trump did that? You think Trump would have a little problem? No, I think that'd be based. The horrific violations of my rights by crooked Joe Biden's weaponized Department of Injustice are unthinkable. It's unthinkable what's happened. So bad for our country. Democrats all, they lawlessly pierced my attorney-client privilege with lawyers. What they did to lawyers, what they have done to our lawyers, our lawyers, all of our lawyers, they've done things that were absolutely horrible and... What lawyers? Didn't like all of yours like quit or something because you're undefendable? Unthinkable. <clears throat> the leaking has been unbelievable and highly illegal. They leak. We've learned more about from the Washington Post, New York Times, about the DOJ's boxes hoax. It's a boxes hoax. Then from prosecutors themselves. We want to read about it. You pick up the Washington Post, which is not doing well, or you pick up the New York Times. But they'll do better now because of these things. You know, this is the only way they survive, but they'll end up dying. Man discovers media. But it's not supposed to be that way. We don't want to learn from the Times. We don't want to learn from leaks. We want to learn from the people we're supposed to learn from. It's like a leaking sieve in Washington. But we learned nothing about the Biden bribery scheme or special counsel Robert Hur's investigation. Robert Hur is doing the Biden investigation. He's a very respected, very nice person. Very nice person. Mine's not such a nice person. Mine's a deranged lunatic, <laughs> which are many times the magnitude of ours in both number and severity. That's the prosecutor that they gave. He has found nothing. He totally exonerated Mike Pence. I'm happy about that. Mike did nothing wrong, but he happened to have classified documents in his house. But they uh, exonerated him. And uh, Biden is a different story. I mean, so much. You have to really think about what I said as a senator. He took all of those documents. It's unprecedented. The prosecutor in the case I will call it our case, is a thug. I've named him Deranged Jack Smith. I wonder what his name used to be, Jack Smith. It sounds so innocent, doesn't it? Jack Smith. What's his name? Jack Smith. He's a very nice man. 
He's a behind-the-scenes guy, but his record is absolutely atrocious. He does political hit jobs. He's been known to viciously arrest a certain governor. You know the governor, Bob McDonald of Virginia, and absolutely ruined his life and the life of his family, all these wonderful family members. I knew them. Only to have the case overturned eight to nothing by the Supreme Court. He destroyed that man and he destroyed that family. And by the way, I will tell you, I'm here and I love you all and we can take it. But what these thugs, what these thugs have done to my family is a disgrace. I will tell you that and I say it to all of the fake news because there's a lot of it back there. What they did to my family, and that young man right there, he's answered more subpoenas than any human being in the history of the world. And you know what? They have nothing after all of those subpoenas. Literally thousands of them. Congress, fake councils, multiple. Is it safe to say at this point that Trump's just kind of lost the energy? I mean, like, I'm... I am, like, falling asleep listening to this. I think he's just kind of lost the lost the hype, I guess. Which sucks, because, like, that was the whole thing about him. It was that he was funny as shit and hype. He, he lost the hype, and he's not really that funny anymore, which is sad. Uh, it's great for the state of American politics, but it's sad for the, uh, the, great, the great people who look forward to his every word. To see what stupid shit he's going to say next. All the report, all of this, all he did is answer subpoenas all the time. At least he's become very experienced at that. Congratulations. But Eric is fantastic. And what he and Don and Ivanka and the whole group, that's what they've gone through. And these are serious people. These are serious people. But what he's done to my family, what they have done to my family is horrible. He also tried to railroad John Edwards on a completely bogus legal theory that didn't hold up in court. It's okay. To keep it real, this segment kind of sucks. I'm going to skip three minutes ahead. And if he's ta still talking about the same shit, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to skip to the end. So I got three minutes from now just about and reducing taxes still further, which we were in the process of doing. They want to distract from the real espionage and the real crime, so let's use President Trump to do so. Let's go out and let's indict President Trump so they don't talk about the $5 million bribe. Just yesterday, Senator Grassley revealed that the Burisma executive who allegedly paid the bribe reportedly has Crooked Joe on tape. They have 17 tapes, I understand. That was, he was... Proof. Be a nice guy to deal with, right? The guy from Burisma, nice company. They got him and Hunter on 17 different tapes, supposedly. But the FBI isn't showing. All I'm saying, every single thing that's come out about Hunter Biden just makes him sound cool. Like, he, you're just a cool fucking dude that did, like, coke off of strippers' asses. That's sick. I mean, come on now. Yeah. Remember, they impeached me for asking a simple question about Biden's corrupt dealings in Ukraine. And now they see that once again, I was right. I was right. I was totally right. Proof. Joe Biden and the radical left can take foreign bribes and be totally protected. Republicans. Dude, you're literally in the pocket of like Russia. <laughs> Come on now. Oh, you see what I mean? This shit is so boring. It's putting me to sleep. But dude, you're literally in the pocket of Russia. Come on now. Come on. All, you must finally get tough. You've got to get tough. you got to get tough and you got to show them. When you arrest your leading political opponent, we no longer have a democracy. When people are allowed to pour through our open borders and... I, I disagree with this. I think if there is a political party... That is anti-democratic, as in anti-democracy, shouldn't be allowed to run. I'm sorry? A anti-democracy party in a democracy, or an anti-republic party in a republic, such as we live in, should not 
be allowed to exist within said republic, within said democracy. It's it's not a it's not a contradictory statement. Our elections are rigged. Our country is in very serious trouble. When inflation is allowed to rage, when energy independence and dominance, it's, we had independence and dominance. We were going to be soon very, very dominant. Within six months, we we're going to dominate the whole world with energy, make a fortune. We were going to be paying off Proof. debt and lowering taxes at a level that nobody's ever seen. Proof. And they came in and they ended it. But when that's taken away from us, when interest rates and taxes spiral upward in an uncontrolled way, when murders are allowed to roam, murderers, these are horrible killers, murderers are allowed to roam the streets of our Democrat-run city. This just isn't true. <laughs> um, adjusted per capita, I am most certain that the majority of violent crime happens in red and rural areas. When adjusted per capita. Of course, whenever there are areas with more people, they are going to kill more people. But whenever you adjust that to, let's say, per thousand, it's those red rural areas. It is unchecked, but the incompetent district attorney in New York indicts Trump for a crime that everybody agrees, every pundit, everybody, there is no crime. But murderers go out. And nobody ever even comes and knocks on their door, and they know they're there, and they know their rooms, and they know their locations, and they're roaming our cities all over. And some of them are coming in right now through our borders. But then you have a nation that, as we are, is in serious, serious decline. We have a nation in serious decline. If the communists get away with this, it won't stop with me. They will not hesitate to ramp up their persecution of Christians, pro-life activists, parents attending school board meetings, and even future Republican candidates, which they do. We must end it permanently and we must end it immediately. Now that the seal, so important, mm. is broken. The seal is broken by what they've done. They should never have done this. This was an unwritten rule. You just don't, unless it's really bad. But you just not gonna lie he's not saying anything he's just kind of waffling here um but uh, overall my impressions let me let me full screen this so i'm not so white uh my impressions of the speech it you know it, it it just lacks what made trump trump it wasn't entertaining it wasn't like quotable nothing came out of it he didn't say shit um it, it just it just wasn't very good. Um, it was incredibly boring. I don't understand how an audience could sit through this and be like, yes, yes, yes. Oh, I, I really don't get it. Um, but uh, hey, I guess that's a uh, that's Republicans for you. But anyways, this video, I'm sorry if it's a little boring. But uh, I'm working with what I've been given with this speech. So, uh, yeah. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a like. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.